Oh man, look at all those cells. Look at all that lacing opening up. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my art channel. Thank you so much for being here. I am super excited about today's video because this is actually something that I've had on my mind to do for months and I just haven't gotten around to doing it. I am doing a massive cell activator test a cell activator showdown, if you will, where I am testing out several different inexpensive cell activators, which do not use Australian Floetrol, and I'm going to compare them side by side, both with a Bloom recipe mixture and with Floetrol mixed paints that are just a thicker consistency. So I think it's going to be pretty definitive, pretty helpful for all of us that maybe can't afford Australian Floetrol. So let's get to it. So let me explain what we've got here. So I have eight of these little six by six canvases. So these will be for my Floetrol mixed paints. These will be for my Bloom recipe paints. So my four cell activators are, this is Floetrol, American Floetrol glue, Elmer's glue, Amsterdam titanium white paint. All of these use Amsterdam titanium white paint as the paint. And then it's got a little bit of Minwax pre-stain wood conditioner. So that's a fairly common alternative cell activator recipe. Then this one is nine parts American Floetrol to one part titanium white paint. And it's possible that it was more like a 10 to one. So I've never tried this one before. I've seen, I've heard people say that it works. So I'm excited to try this one. Then this one is my current favorite right now. This is Amsterdam titanium white paint just mixed with water. So this has been so far my favorite alternative cell activator. And then this one is the Floetrol glue paint and Minwax pre-stain mixture, exactly the same as this one, except this one is a couple of days old because I've had mixed results with this particular mixture. When it's fresh mixed, I've had some really good results, like with this painting. But if you then let that cup of cell activator sit for a while, it doesn't seem to work as well the next time, such as with this painting. So I want to compare it side by side to see whether something that's mixed fresh, like within an hour of painting versus something that's a couple of days old, does it make a difference? Okay, so for each one, I'm using two that are paints, and to try to be as consistent as possible, one of them is Master's Touch, and one of them is Creative Inspirations, and then the other four colors are Mica Pigments from this new set that I just got. Isn't that box pretty? So this is a set of 24 Mica powders, and there's some really pretty colors in there. They mixed up very well, both in my uh, gloss gel and Floetrol mixture and my Bloom medium mixture. And I can't wait to see how they work in these pores. If you're interested in trying out these mica powders, there is a link in the video description and there is a coupon code that is good for the next couple weeks. So jump on that if you'd like to try out these powders. These ones are gonna be on a white pillow, white house paint pillow. These are gonna be on a black pillow. So let's start with the bloom side. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a little three ounce cup to sort of dip up some paint. And I want plenty of pillow here because it's a small canvas, but the sides are deep which means I need a lot of the pillow paint to stretch over those sides. I have a feeling I'm gonna be going through a lot of baby wipes today. Okay, 
Let me give the pillow a quick torch, get out as many air bubbles as I can. Okay, now the fun part, layering the colors. So I'm going to be doing a cell activator swipe because I find that that's, it's just easiest for me to get lots of cells. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to be blowing from the center, though that would be another future thing to test. Does a certain cell activator work better with blowing or with swiping? But for now, I'm just going to be swiping. So instead of making a center pattern, I'm just going to kind of squiggle the colors all over the place and I'll make just a fun design. So I'm going to start here. My colors for this side, I have Thalo Blue from Master's Touch. My goodness, that is quite thick. I didn't think it was quite that thick. And I'll put it out on every canvas. Uh, next up is Sky Blue by Creative Inspirations. That one looks like it's going to flow a little better. It's still quite thick. Generally, paints for blooms are very thick, but they have to be able to flow. So it's that delicate balance between does it flow, does it move, but is it still quite thick? Okay, let's do some of this brown, metallic brown. So this is a mica pigment. This is hot chocolate. So I wanted to include some of this so we got quite an earthy kind of a feel, but I don't want lots and lots of it. The nice thing about sets of mica powders is it gives you colors that you might not buy otherwise. You know, would I have gone to the store and said, I need a metallic brown paint? Probably not, but now that I have it, I'm using it. So, okay, last one. This is Spring Rain. Beautiful color. And I want plenty of that. And there are so many ways of laying down colors for a bloom swipe. This way of just kind of squiggling them all over the place it's a nice, easy way of getting just a blend of colors all across the canvas. You could put them down sort of in lines, which is a good way to make like a, like a gradient effect, sort of flowing from one color into another. But I want a nice mix of the colors all over. Yay! Okay, get those cups out of the way. Let's do another torch. Torching is very important with a bloom pour because house paint really holds on to air bubbles and they make these annoying little pock marks in the finished painting. So you want to make sure you uh, torch out all those air bubbles as you're going along to try to have less of them. Okay, I'm going to start with this one because it's already spilling over the side a bit. I'm going to bring it right here. This is where I'm going to do all my swiping and tilting. So this one corresponds with the nine to one Floetrol to paint recipe. So I'm going to put some of it onto the back of a palette knife. Not a huge layer, but you know, sort of a medium. Okay, and then I'm just gonna gently swipe across. Okay, I'm seeing some cells come up. They're pretty small right now. Let me do one additional swipe with a smaller palette knife. Just to grab a little bit more. Oh, 
Okay. Well, I'm seeing cells. This is not as much of that lacing cell reaction as I was expecting, honestly. So I want to stretch it out. I need some more of my pillow paint for that. I actually have some of the pillow paint in a squeeze bottle, which is going to make it a lot easier to just put it in some targeted places. Just make sure we have plenty of paint on the canvas so we can cover all the sides. Okay, let's tilt this. Wow, these colors are fantastic. And as I'm stretching it, the cells are definitely opening up. So it was not an immediate lacing reaction, but they're there, they're present. So this is really cool. The color blend is beautiful. Yeah, it's like jewels. You can see the direction where I swiped it. And then you can see sort of the lace on top. So that's very nice. So that is the nine to one US Floetrol to Amsterdam paint. And I realize I have not covered all of the corners. I'm just gonna do all the swipes and I'll take care of that when you don't have to watch it. Okay, next one. So this is the three parts American Floetrol to one part Elmer's glue to one part Amsterdam paint plus a couple drops of the Minwax pre-stain wood conditioner. So let's do that and I'm going to do it exactly the same. Palette knife swipe. And this is the fresh mixed version of this cell activator. I mixed up the Floetrol in glue and paint yesterday, but then I only added the Minwax today. All right, let's swipe it. Okay, wow. So already I'm seeing more cell reaction from this one than I did from that one. I'm curious to see how it looks when it opens up. I'm going to do the same thing and use my little one to add a secondary swipe just to tie it all in. This one I'm going to go up this way. That was weird. I think my direction was wrong, but most of that will go off the side anyway. Very cool. Definitely getting cell reaction here. Okay, let's add some more of the pillow to the outside so that we can get the whole thing covered. Beautiful. That is gorgeous. These colors are magnificent. It's a beautiful, beautiful blend of colors. And I did get more lacing with this one, but not drastically more, just a little bit more. Next one to try is the Amsterdam paint mixed just with water. So that is my current favorite. And we'll see whether it performs as well as I think it will, or whether it's kind of the same as the others. All right, here we go.
Oh man, look at all those cells. Look at all that lacing opening up. That is a massive reaction. I'm gonna need to do two swipes with the little one because I sort of cut through the middle here. So this has way more lacing, I believe, than either of the other two. It'll be interesting for me to watch back through the video. My impression is that this is more. So let's stretch it out. Wow, I love the movement of this one. Really swoopy. Just absolutely gorgeous. And there is a lot of lacing. It's beautiful. I'm gonna blow on this section and see if I can open up just a couple of cells there. Love that one. Okay, last one. Time for version two of the Minwax Pre-Stain Glue Paint Floatrol, whatever it is. Um, but this one is a couple of days old, just to see whether sitting makes it not as effective. I'm gonna turn it so I can keep swiping right to left. And I don't know whether two days is long enough to let it sit to kind of deactivate it. When I've tried it in the past, it's like if it's a week or a month or something, it doesn't work as well. So let's see whether two days is enough. Okay, I am seeing some cells. So I guess two days isn't enough to deactivate it. But it still is definitely producing less cells than this one. Markedly less cells. Okay, so that one turned out very pretty also. So all four of these worked. We got lacing in all of them. We got, you know, cells come up, the colors are beautiful, the designs look beautiful. All four of these could easily hang together as a finished piece. Um, that said, there are some differences in how the cells came up. So I will show you that at the end of the video. I'll give you a close-up of these and a close-up of these. I'm going to quickly reset. Or I'm going to clean this area up so that I can start on the second batch. So we'll be right back. I went ahead and covered up the corners with paint. So those are all finished. Let's move on to this side now. So I've got a cup of black base paint here. And this is mostly house paint because, again, I'm trying to stay consistent from one to the other. But I did add some Floetrol, so it's a little bit thinner. And that way the mixture is more similar to what my colors are. So let's put some pillow down on each of these. So my colors here, I have this pink. This is light magenta. My youngest daughter, Lauren, gave this to me for Christmas. She picked it out herself. So let's put that on first. Oh, that's going to be so pretty next to the black. Okay. I actually forgot to torch the pillow, so let me torch that now. Get out as many of those air bubbles as I can before we get too far into it. Next one, this is Titanium White from Creative Inspirations. And these are all mixed with Floetrol. The two paints are relatively thick paints, so it's about one part paint, 
to two parts flow troll and that still made this quite a thick mixture and then I added a little bit of water just to even out all the consistencies. My two mica powders I mixed with gloss gel first to sort of form a thick paint and then I mixed that about two parts flow troll to one part paint. So they're all pretty pretty even there. If you were using a craft paint, you might do a one-to-one -one just to make it thick enough. Okay, there we go, plenty of white. Okay, first mica powder. This one is tumbleweed, which is an interesting name, but it's a really pretty sort of peach color. Okay, and then the last color, this one is Brilliant green, so it's a beautiful sort of mint color, and I thought that that would be a nice sort of pop of fun in this paint mix. Those are looking so pretty already, really funky. Okay, let's torch those, and then we'll do exactly the same thing four cell activators, four canvases. I'm gonna swipe them and see what kind of effects we get because our paints are mixed differently here. They're mixed with Floetrol. So it's possible that one cell activator will work really well with a bloom recipe, but it won't work as well with this. Since I like using Floetrol for most of my pores, it's nice to find a cell activator that can work for that too. So this is going to be the Floetrol Glue Minwax. One, we'll start with that. Okay, so some, some cells are opening. They seem to be mostly round cells. Cells that are popping up instead of lacing. Um, let me add a couple of small swipes to tie it all together. So a lot of that white is just sitting on top. It's not really turning into lace at this point. So let's tilt it and see whether any of those bright colors pop up and the cells open up. Oops, I forgot. We need some more. We need some more of our base layer first. Okay, so that's super interesting. Interesting in that not much happened. It's very gray. I don't know if it was the white cell activator paint or the white actual paint that just blended with the background. That is not very attractive and it did not get very many cells. I'm not loving that. It's very milky. I mean, it looks very kind of space-ish, but that is not my favorite look. I was hoping, definitely hoping for more cells, more lacing. And that's not what we've gotten. Okay, next one. This is going to be the nine to one Floetrol to paint. Let's see how this one works. Okay, not a lot of cells popping up here either. This is very interesting. It is a bit surprising that neither of these is working very much. So let's cover it up, cover this corners, stretch it out, see whether anything else happens when I stretch it. Wow, that is what you call a failed cell activator. There's like no cells. Okay, so moderate success with the uh, Minwax one. 
absolutely zero success with the 9 to 1 Floetrol and paint, which is not surprising since all the paint has Floetrol in it, so it wouldn't really add anything new to the mixture. Now let's try the one that I'm almost certain will work. The Amsterdam paint and water. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna work because it has worked for me before. Oh yeah, we got lots of cells opening up there. I was gonna say they look rounder than these, but they continue to grow, so it is still somewhat lace. It is not as much lacy as with the bloom recipe, but there's lots of cells. And that's from the Amsterdam paint and water. Let me add my second little swipe there. Man, I mean, just look at the difference there. This was a proper cell activator. It made so much lacing, so many beautiful cells. Okay, so the only one left is the Minwax Floetrol glue mixture that's two days old. I'm expecting it's gonna work about like this. I'm gonna do it anyway. Yep, pretty much like number one. It's very milky, not a lot coming through. Let me try torching to see whether that brings up a few more cells. Well, it popped some air bubbles. I don't know if it's going to give us more lacing, though. So that was very interesting. Let me give you a close-up and show you what we've learned. All right, here we go, close-up time. Okay, so let's just remember, these were our four cell activators. Top left was three parts to one parts to one part, Floetrol glue and paint, plus a few drops of Minwax pre-stain. Top right was nine to one, American Floetrol to paint. Bottom left was about two parts paint to one part water. And our bottom right was the same Minwax solution, but it was about two days old instead of fresh. So let's start over here. So each one of these made cells. It made lacing. So here was our first Minwax one. See, we've got lots of beautiful small cells. This was the 9 to 1. And we got some cells there. I don't think it was as many. See here in the corners, there's not as much reaction as there is kind of in that center area. And then here, the Amsterdam paint and water. I think this is the best one. It produced the most lacing and the lacing is that sort of jaggedy, you know, lightning kind of lacing that you like to see in blooms. And then over here, this was the two-day-old Minwax solution, and it was about the same as the other one. Maybe not quite as many cells, but pretty close. And that was our bloom recipe. Moving on to the paint... Sorry, my chair is squeaking. Moving on over here to the paints that were mixed with Floetrol. Okay, so we had a little bit of reaction here. Now, I just torched so those spots that are just black, those are torched cells. Those are not actual things brought up by the cell activator. Then this was the uh, 9 to 1 Floetrol to paint. This was abysmal. Pretty much the only cells we have here are from the torch. Same with this one, the two-day-old Minwax. Not great. We had a little bit of cells but mostly just a big smear. And then we have the Amsterdam paint and water. And look how much reaction we got even with the Floetrol mixed paint. 
So the lacing in the cells are slightly different shaped. They're a little bit more round with the Floetrol mix than with a Bloom mix, but still you get a lot of that lacing. Okay, I'm gonna let these dry. Let me show you what they look like then. So all of these dried perfectly. None of the cells warped or anything. Isn't that just gorgeous? These mica pigments are really cool, very shimmery as the light catches them, especially here in the Bloom recipe pores. They're extra shiny. Over here, you can still see some of the colors of those mica pigments, but because the cell activator kind of stayed on top most of the time, they're harder to see than I think they would be otherwise. But yeah, a very cool experiment overall. What did you think? Let me know down in the comments, have you ever used one of these cell activators? Which one have you tried and have you been satisfied with it? Did this test surprise you? Coming soon, I am going to put the best result from this video, which is the Amsterdam paint and water. I'm gonna put that head to head with Amsterdam paint and Australian Floetrol just to see whether the inexpensive one works as well as the real deal or not. So be on the lookout for that video because it's coming soon. Thanks everybody for watching this video. I hope it inspired you to try something new and I will see you very soon for another video. Bye.